Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And who has been here in the, my husband has been doing the series, No Fear. No Fear November. What should be No Fear November, December, January, February, right? But I'm so glad that we're, we're targeting this, uh, this issue because I believe I heard it, and I don't know, don't quote me, you can go on Google. Google is excellent to help us uh, research. But I heard that it's only really God has given us two emotions, and that's love and fear. And fear really is not, do you know fear is not a sin? God, and I hear like people say, eh. no, just kidding, I just heard it myself. But fear is like, you know, the fear of survival, right? If, if you're going to cross the street, there should be a little bit of fear. You can't just cross the street and walk in and it, you, you can't tell the car, stop in Jesus' name. I know that would be stupidity, right? So we have that fear, that survival, that we need to like, hey, move the car's coming. I need to move out. That's the kind of fear I'm talking about. But then when we partner with fear, have you ever partnered with fear? Okay, good, because I thought I was the only one. So partnering with fear looks like this. Um, it's like getting a letter, right? Uh, getting a letter. Let's say you got a letter from the IRS. Those are the most scariest letter. Like if I see the IRS, I love them, pray for them, but my heart is like, oh, I don't know why. It just drops. Like they're just telling me, hello, congratulations. No, they never tell you that. But, you know, they just send you a letter here and there. But I remember one time I got a letter. And it was from the IRS, and it had my name. So I was like, okay. That morning I woke up, right, and I was feeling victorious. You know when you wake up victorious? There are some days that you wake up like, voila, and then you, you know, you know, you're reminded who you are. Got it, you know, you got in the moment with God. You had a, a, an intimacy, an, an intimate moment with God, right? So I remember that morning I woke up, and I was like, today is going to be a good day because we love to say things right but sometimes we say things but we don't believe it and I think I didn't believe it that morning so I was like today I'm gonna have a great day and I said I didn't check the mailbox yesterday so I went to the mailbox and it had my name by the time I had the envelope in my hand I think I was already pale right by the time I got to my door I had to open the envelope and I'm already thinking oh my gosh it's just, maybe I owe money maybe although we have an amazing t tax guy if you want to be with this firm so I can tell you maybe I get perks with him but by the time okay that's normal worry right like I started to worry and then and then uh, but the letter didn't really say anything it just said that I needed to call and I'm like what would I need to call and you know they're like you have to decipher what they're saying because I read the letter and I didn't know what they went. Did they want me to call them? Do they owe money? Do they owe me money? Right? That would be nice. But then at night, I went to sleep. And I really didn't go to sleep. Now I was already thinking, like, I wonder if when I call tomorrow, like, what are they going to tell me? Maybe, it, well, I have all these scenarios already playing in my head, which already took my, my sleep. And see, that's the moment we partner with fear. And when we partner with fear, that's when it becomes sin. Because then we invite the spirit of fear. And God said in Timothy, right? He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. I have never given you the spirit of fear. But I have given you the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Which means we have a sober mind. At that moment when my mind was going crazy, do I owe money? Do they owe me money? It would have been nice if, my, if I would have sat there and the whole night would have thought, my gosh, tomorrow I'm going to get good news that they're going to give me a great return, right? That would be a good outcome. But I wasn't thinking of that. I was just thinking about the worst things that can happen. And as I was listening, I've been listening to, to, the, to the messages. I thought, my gosh, we are so, right now, the way everything that's going around is just fear. 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 Around the world, there's nothing. If you turn on the TV, there is not even one ounce of good news. One ounce. And I've been praying, and we cannot, like right now, it's California. It's on fire. But you know what? Instead of being fear, fearful, I said this morning, I'm going to pray, but I'm not going to partner. Because I tend to make partnerships, right? No, I'm going to partner with the truth of God. And what I've been doing is I've been reading, I encourage you, um, because in order to, to, in order to overcome fear, we need to know the word of God. There is no other way to overcome fear. So I, I said, for the last, I think, I think for the last two months, 
or a month and a half, all I read is the Gospels. I've been reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Juan. Reading it over and over and over and over. Because I said, why is it that we're not effective? Why is it that we're still bound with fear? Why is it that we, ha- we still have a lot of strongholds? What is it that, that the world is getting dark? Is but we should be getting light. Like the light of Jesus should be shining in me. We should be like, you know, have you seen those, those bugs that just, they're drawn into the light even if they die? But they're not going to die here. They're going to find life in Jesus. So I've been reading and reading, and I thought, you know what? We complicate things. Jesus, I thought, oh my God, he only, whenever he talked and he was healing, he says that he went about healing and delivering, and he went preaching the gospel. But when he healed and delivered, he was just a four-word letter man. It was, be healed. Do you want to be made well? Sin no more. And then I thought, you know, sometimes, have you ever had so much fear in your life that you're praying but there's different types of communication with God, right? Sometimes we think that we're praying, and while I'm saying this, I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. But sometimes we think that we're praying. Sometimes, many, many times I thought, you know what, I'm communicating with God, but if you don't let him talk to you, you're not communicating. You're having a monologue, right? And many times I have a lot of them. So I feel good because I was talking to him. I didn't let him talk to me, but I was talking to him. But then I realized many times that I have talked to God, If he didn't give me any, and last Wednesday they were talking about hearing God, he's always talking, is that we're not listening. But I thought many times that I have talked to God and thinking I'm in communication, because communication is both ways, right? I was actually complaining. You know know when we complain, right? You know when I want to vent, you find someone that you can vent, but you you just want to vent. You don't want, um, especially married people. How many married people do we have here? Our husbands tend to want to fix us, right? We just want to vent. We just want to say, this is how I feel. We don't want any, like, okay, this is what you need to do, A, B, C, and D. No, no we just want to, like, we say we want to communicate, but really, we, we really don't want to communicate. We just, I just want to tell you how I feel, and you hurt me, and now I'm gone on my way. Right? Right? You can pray for me if you want to, but I don't want any advice right now. I just want to tell you that I was having a bad day. Right? And so we do that with God. And he said, many times we confuse. He says, in everything, in everything, pray. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, be, but you, let your request be made known to God. And I thought, you know, we are trying. And I thought to myself, we are trying to overcome fear, but we're overcoming it in our own strength. And I, th- I think sometimes we don't even know that we, the Bible says, Jesus is that we are, we are new creations in God. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, therefore, if anyone is in who? He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So it says that I'm a new creation. We have a new nature. When Jesus went on the cross for you and I, he took our sickness. He was nailed on the cross. He took our Disease, every disease, every name that there is, there's no name above his name, right? Cancer, um, whatever it is, he took it upon himself. He took our shame, he took our sorrows. So he took everything and he has our name. So we don't have to worry, we don't have to fear that because every promise that he has given us, every promise that he gives us, we, he already made a way for it. We have already had a great outcome. But we see our promises and we think they're taking forever. I thought, hey, he promised me a lot of things and you haven't really. I don't think you, your promise is it's standing because I haven't seen it. But I'm going to tell you, our God lives here because he doesn't think like us. He's higher than us. He wants us to come above just like where he is. Because he, has, he is an eternal God and he has no time. We live on a timeline, but he doesn't live on a timeline. So for us, is we're waiting for 10 years, we've been waiting for five years, we've been waiting for five months, and some of you are waiting for a week and you're already complaining, right? No, but you have to understand, in order for us to overcome fear, we need to know who our God is. I mean, like, to really know him. 
I think in my 22 years, this is the best place in my life that I can honestly say that I know who my father is. And I'm going to tell you, the devil always comes for our identity. That's, he, since the beginning of time, he did it with Adam and Eve. The moment they, they went and they tasted the fruit, what happened? They were already, they said they felt naked and they were what? Afraid. He says, I was afraid. I heard you walking and I was afraid. So since the beginning of time, all he wanted to do is instill fear in our hearts. Since the beginning of time, he came to question everything that God had given the promise to Adam and Eve. And that's what the new Adam needed to be born, which is Jesus, right? And he gave us a better covenant. And so he came and he gave us life. He came and he says, you know what? You are a new creation. You have a new nature. So that means if I have a new nature, that means we were all crucified with him because he was thinking about you and me. And so that means when he died, we died with him in our own nature, our sickness, our disease, whatever it is, our depression, oppression, you name it. Everything went down with him. But when we resurrected, when he resurrected, you and I resurrected, but not as the old nature, a new nature, a new nature resurrected in you and me. Because it's the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead that lives inside of us. And see, when we're in fear, and believe me, I could, be, I could have been the queen of fear. I probably would have won. Because fear has always, the enemy always has, and, and my fear could be different than your fear. We all have fears. And we all have, a, we all have, actually, we give the enemy access into our lives. And he is such a liar. He is such a deceiver. If he can get you to think, because he will get us to think like, uh, you know, if you had a hard childhood or maybe you went through a divorce or may maybe you went through something that was very tragic. The enemy wants you to identify with what, what, what happened to you, with the experience that you have. And he wants to diminish who our God is. There is this verse, and I didn't give it to you guys. Uh, it's in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 51, verse 12. And he talks about when, when God is, is saying, he says, I am the one who comes for you. He says, I am your comforter. Why are you afraid of men? Why are you afraid of men? In other words, what he's saying is like, hey, I am the one that you need. I'm bigger than whatever you're going through. He's bigger than your past. He's bigger than your issues. He's bigger than your problems. He's bigger than your whatever you're going through, your financial, I don't know, maybe you lost everything. He's bigger than that. But until we know who our God is, we will be so fixated in who you are because the enemy is going to tell you, you know what he left you he abandoned you because if he would have been there with you this would have never happened but see but that's a lie in the moment that you partner with the light with the light that means that we are partner we have partner with fear because he would always tell you he would always tell you, you know what god forgotten you and i was thinking the other day i think my husband said it sometimes when we are in a when we are going through trials, and if you read the Bible, I don't know why I'm, I'm looking for an easy life. Like when you read the Bible, there's nothing easy about here. It's simple, but it's not easy. Everyone that conquered, everyone that did great conquest for God, there was nothing easy about their life. But they knew their God. And they knew it wasn't about I know me. And sometimes we're trying to, there's been times in my life, there have been times in my life when I said that I even forget who I am. Have you ever forgotten like even who you are? You're like, I don't even know who I am. Because you, you're, you feel like you're in a blender. You're upside down one moment. You're like being tossed to and fro, right? Because doubt will come. Unbelief will come. But you know what God will tell you today? Do not be so fixated in who you are. Just fixate yourself in me and who I am in you. Because if you know, if you know who he is, then we know who we are. But I think sometimes we do it, we twist it, we flip it, and we, I need to know who I am. I, no, just know who your father is. Know who your savior is. And my husband was saying um, not too long ago, we were driving in the car and we were talking with Alexis and 
And we said, Alexis, no matter what happens, family is family, right? One day you can have a, you know, a disagreement, another day, you know, you don't like each other, right? Let's be real, right? And there's days that everything is good, right? But she doesn't question every morning, like, is he my dad or is he not my dad? Right? Just because they had an argument that day before or they were not in agreement, like, oh, I don't know. Is, is he my dad? I don't know if he's my dad today. And then the next day when they're good, like, oh, daddy, I love you, right? And the next day they have an attitude with each other. And then like, I don't know, is he my dad again? That's the way we are. Think about it. That's the way we are. We question when something is not going right, when you feel like he's not talking to you. Because we feel, the one thing is to feel that he's not with us, that he's not responding to our prayer. He's not responding to our supplication. And so one morning we wake up and I'm like, I don't know if he's really, am I an orphan or what the heck? Did he abandon me? Did he leave me? Bipolar, spiritually. And I'm talking about me. I know you don't deal with this. But then I thought, how silly, how silly it is if, if we as parents, I never, I don't care how, how Isaac's going to be here like, oh, you, I'm always the child that it's exposed, he says. Well, he's the passionate child, you know what I mean? But just because he makes a mistake, I don't wake up one morning and say, you know what? You're not my son today. You were my son yesterday. But today, and what I heard from you, you're not my son. Until you get better, until you fix yourself, then I'll be your mother. And that we think that that's the relationship that we have with our God. And I'm here to tell you now that your father is your father, and he knows all things, and he is all powerful. He is without limits, and he is all things are possible in him. All things. So right now, I know that there's a lie that you're believing because you, you think there is something in your life or an issue in your life or a circumstance in your life, and you think that, no, God cannot do this one, no, not this one. Whether you designed it with your own hands, you know, because sometimes we, we do our own design, right? Sometimes we just fall into something. Sometimes it's just things happen to you. But it doesn't matter. What I want you to know is that your God is able to deliver you at any moment. I'm here to tell you there's nothing that he cannot do. But he needs your agreement. He needs your agreement. He needs our agreement. How is it that we are so easily moved and we agree with the liar? And you know that when we agree with the liar, we actually give him, give him power. When you agree with the liar, we give him, he gets bigger. Remember the rumor weed for those in the 90s? There's always millennials still like, who's the rumor weed? We're veggie tales. No one here knows about veggie tales. Shame on you. You guys should be saved. But there, no, I'm not going to go into it. Okay, go to 1 John 4, 17. Let's run, let's run. It says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment. When Jesus comes, if he will come tonight or tomorrow, do you have the boldness that you are in right standing with God? Because you are in love? Because you're walking in faith? Because you have great expectation? Are you 100% right? Do you know that today, at any moment in time, every day that you wake up, it is a new day? You, you know that you and I, as children of God, we can reset our life every single day because His mercies are new every single morning? The moment the sun comes out, as a matter of fact, at 12 a.m., you can set your alarm. And whatever you did today, tomorrow, at 12 a.m., you wake up and you said, I am. This is a new day. I have a new opportunity. And I know who my God is. And today I'm expecting to have a great day. Today I'm expecting my healing. Today I'm expecting my deliverance. Today I'm expecting God to move on my behalf because I have his favor. We're praying for things that we already have, and that's what we think that God is not answering because we don't know him, that he already gave it to us. Do you know how many times I pray for favor? 
And he's like, guys were like, why are you asking me? It's like, if I would buy cereal for the kids, and I'm like, okay, here's the cereal, because that's all I know how to cook, right? That's your breakfast, cereal, banana, and, and, and orange juice. I already bought it for them. And I told them, hey, you're a mom, because she's a woman, a Proverbs 31 woman, brings her fruit from afar. Here is your cereal, the bananas, and the OJ. You're grown up enough because they're, they're not babies, right? Okay, so now I'm not going to wake up in the morning at day and serve you your, your cereal and that, well, that, that belongs to you. It's here. Wouldn't that be silly that every morning they would, would be waking up and crying and ask me, Mom, where is my cereal, my banana? They're 24 and 19. Please, Mom, get me the cereal. Get it yourself. I already bought it with my money. Get it yourself. And so I think many times we're in fear because we don't think, it, we're thinking like, and I have prayed it like, Lord, give me favor. Lord, I pray that today you, there is favor in my life. I pray that if I go and, and, and I fabricate the prayer, right? I complicate the prayer. And this is the way God is going to gonna respond to me. Today, I'm going to find favor. So I'm going to go apply for this job. Let's say I'm applying for that job. And then I'm already praying for the manager. I'm already praying for the people who's going to receive me. I'm already praying that I'm going to do good. Instead of just saying, you know what, today, thank you for the favor. I'm going. And Lord, you're going to lead me. Simple prayer, right? But then we go and then they don't even want to see you. And then we complicate things because we think that God is not listening to us. He said that for freedom, he has set us free. That's in Romans 5. And so we're asking God, free me. And he says, you know what? Are you ready? Are you? It's like my dog. I have a dog, which is my son, another son. Don't tell Isaac. No, oh, he knows already. He's a Rottweiler. And you know that he doesn't know how big he is. He doesn't know who he is. And I'm like, I'm your, maybe I baby him too much. I'm like, I'm your mama. And he comes and he wants to jump up me. And he's 125 pounds. He's bigger than me. And then when he sees people, he wants to go. And then he wants you to pet him. And what he does is he opens his big mouth, grabs your hand, and flips it because he wants you to pet him. And then we have the crazy ones, the little Frenchies, French bulldogs, they're wonderful, but they're crazy. They're almost narcissistic. <laughs> I'm like, they don't have a problem knowing who they are. They think they're big. They actually are guard dogs. Bear will stay and be quiet. He probably, if he gets out of the gate, he's crying. If the other two get out of the gate, they're gone. Because they're going to go explore. Because they know their neighborhood. And they go to our neighbor and they're asking for food. That's what our neighbor told us. I'm not lying. He goes and then he cries and then he wants food. And then it makes me look bad. There I go thinking about me like, they're going to think that I don't feed my dogs. And then after, I'm defending myself. You know I feed the dogs, right? Fear. What are they going to think of me? I fed them this morning. And one time I was like, why am I giving the whole story about when I fed them? Just because these dogs are crazy. They came, they, we brought them from Mexico, so we call them los Michoacanos, you know. I don't think they know that they're in the States. Because they love neighbors and they just go ask for food. Like, we're not in Mexico. I have to tell them, we are not in Morelia. You are in the United States, we don't do that. You have food in your house. You don't like it? Oh, well. My kids didn't like it, but look at them. I don't know why I went there. <laughs> but what, we're, what I'm trying to say is that we don't even know who we are. And here it says that we're perfected among in his love. And when he comes, we'll have the boldness in the day of judgment because he is. And so are we in this world. So Jesus said, well, to Moses, he says, I am the great I am, Right? I am. Whatever you need, he is in the present tense. Do you know how many times I had thought that I was living in, in, in faith, but I wasn't living in faith? I tell you why. Because without hope, there is no faith. Because today, 
And it's the make-believe. I'm not asking to fake it. God didn't say fake your day. It says we walk by faith. But if we are walking by faith today, but I'm worried about my tomorrow, my tomorrow is my hope. Hope is for tomorrow. But today I live in faith. But if I think that I'm living in faith and I don't have hope for tomorrow, I'm just kidding myself. I just have, have a lot of fear and I'm, and I'm trying to, to confess something that I don't believe. And see, with our heart we believe. And you have to believe that your God is greater and he is bigger than anything that we will ever face in this world. Anything. Anything. It says, because of as he is, there is no fear in love, but for, for perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves what? But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. You and I are able to love because he first loved us. You didn't love God first. He loved you first. He is love. But you know, I, I think we're so caught up in doing we think that the only way to please God, the only way that God is going to love us is if we do good. No, it's we're human beings. He called us human beings. We're not human doings. And I think sometimes we get it caught up in our performance. And if I don't do this because the world is so conditional with the love. If, if you can get a raise if you have this, let's say you have this degree. You, I mean, I would love you if you bring me A's. I would love you if you do good in school. Uh, we're so conditional. But our God is not conditional. That's why it's so hard for us to believe that we have an amazing God and a good father. And I'm not an orphan. You're not an orphan. And you're not a victim either. You might say, well, you don't know what I've been through. Believe me, I've been through a lot of things. I'm not negating the fact, but I'm, I'm, but I'm, but I'm telling you to think now, who are we in God and who he is in me? And because of who he is in me, I can say, you know, I am a daughter. And I can live from that, from that point of view. I can live from that position as a daughter. I don't, have to be, I don't have to live my life as a victim. I don't have to live my life as my past or what happened in my past. Yeah, I have to process it. But I live and I live in Christ. And if we live in Christ, then fear has to be gone because we're going to allow God to love us. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm very hard on myself. And a lot, I think a lot of people are very hard on themselves. And we can't believe that God is not that way. Do you know that God is not disappointed? He's not in heaven thinking like, oh my gosh, I messed up. I called them to do this. I gave them that business. I gave them that family. Look how they messed it up. And look, our God is not that way because you know what? He doesn't change. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not like people. He tells no lies. He's not like humans. He doesn't change his mind. When he says something, he does it. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. You should write that one down. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. Maybe he gave you a promise 10 years ago, but according to the word of God, he says that he keeps it. He keeps it. Would you keep it? But would you keep it? Would you still believe it if it has been 10 years? Would you still believe that God is who he says he is and he doesn't change? He is unchangeable. And you know that he doesn't change because he's so faithful. He will forever be faithful. If will, he will forever be good because that is who he is. That is his nature. And he cannot go against his nature. You know, even if I never change, do you know that he still loves me the same? He still loves me. There's nothing that you can do or not do for him to change the love that he has for you. And I think once we know the love of the Father, that's when everything, every fear dissipates. I think once we know who he is in my life, like to this day, I'm like, I cannot believe that you love me that much. That he loves you so much. And that his plans for you are so good. His plans are the best. And he has a great future because that's what the word of God says. And then we need to declare it. 
And you know, I believe in confessions, and sometimes I'm not talking about being positive, you know, let's say positive things, you know, which is good, it's healthy, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm going back to not just being like um, echolalic, right, like when you just, you just repeat things, but without understanding, no, but it's the knowing and knowing the Father. And if you get anything today, if you didn't get nothing today, what I said, one thing that I want you to get is that God wants a relationship with you. He wants intimacy with you. And that we have everything that it takes. We, every problem and every issue, we already have the tools and we have the person already living inside of us. And that's Jesus Christ. And we have been sealed. We have a guarantee. We have a seal of the Holy Spirit. And he has the toughest job. Because he's always trying to tell us what the Father wants, but we don't believe it. But I'm here to tell you that your future is bright. I don't know where you're going through. But I'm here to tell you that your future is bright. That your future is good. And that he wants to show you. And he wants you to have great expectancy of your tomorrow. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. He didn't say he have our doing, right? It says in him and who in Jesus we live and move and have our being. And also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. What does that mean that? It means that we need to fully understand that God is all in. Jesus is all in. And there's nothing that can separate us. That's why he tells us that we can rejoice in times of trials and tribulations. Why? He wouldn't say that if we didn't have him. He says that in him we move and in him we are. So every issue that you're going to face, he's going to be there with us because that's how I live. I live my life in Christ. Whether you believe it or not, you live your life in Christ. That's the position that he has given you. You know what? You can't say, well, I don't feel like I live my life in Christ. I, I know you might not feel that you live your life in Christ, but it doesn't matter how you feel. It's that position that he has given you as a daughter and as a son of God. And you know why the devil wants us to partner with him in fear? Because he's afraid and he doesn't want to think of his, of his ending. Where is my scripture? Let me tell you this. Philippians, and I'm closing with this. Philippians 127. This is why the enemy doesn't want you to, to believe and to believe that God is enough, that our God is love. And he says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you tonight, is your conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus, of Jesus Christ? You know why he says worthy? Because the gospel is good news. And I'm not saying let's fake it. And I'm not talking about when people say, how are you doing? You're like, I'm doing great. But you're faking it. No, it's okay to say, you know, I'm not doing good today, right? We all have moments. And maybe you're not going to have a, given a, maybe you're not going to have a few days good or maybe um, a few months here and there, right? But, we, but when it comes a, becomes a lifestyle, then you're not having a good life. Because we're not supposed to stay there. We're not supposed to be stuck we're supposed to live in his love. We're supposed to live knowing that we can conquer all things. And he says, only let you come to be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, this is Paul, I may hear of your affairs. That you stand fast, fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And let not any in any way terrified, be terrified by your own adversaries, which is to them the proof of perdition, but into you of salvation and that from God. And he says, this is very powerful. He says, do not in any way be terrified by your adversaries. And I'm not talking about your adversaries and your enemies that are work or people that you think. I'm not talking about that. Do you know that when you and I overcome fear, do you know that hell has a PA system? And when you and I overcome fear, they're broadcast in, in hell. And you know that the, the devil is terrified because he's the one that should be terrified, not you and I. He's the one that should be tormented, not you and I. He should be the one who should be terrified every single day when you and I wake up and we know that our God is bigger than our problem. My God is bigger than my disease. My God is bigger than this. And you, 
And if you don't believe, well, some people say, well, be careful how you say my, my disease or whatever. Or that disease, if you want to say it that way. Because sometimes we have confused confessions with declarations. You go to the doctor, God doesn't want you to deny the facts, but he wants you to override them with his truth. Because we're not afraid, right? So it's not when you go to the doctor and say, well, you have cancer. No, I don't receive it. No, it's not about being silly. It's about, okay, thank you for giving me the facts. Now I know. I know, but my God is bigger than cancer. My God is bigger than this tumor. My God is bigger than my depression. My God is bigger than my anxiety. He is bigger. That's who my God is. Not denying it, not numbing it. No, I'm going to, okay, I, I recognize it because you know what? With him, I'm able to face it. David went and he ran to, to, the, to, the, to the giant because he wasn't afraid. He knew who his God is. He says, who is this uncircumcised guy? Who is this guy? Because he's talking against my God. See, if we know our God, if we know our Father, oh my gosh, we can do great damage. Great damage in the kingdom of darkness. I want to do great damage. No, we're, we shouldn't be the ones damaging. We shouldn't be the ones damaging each other. We shouldn't be the ones being terrified. We shouldn't be the ones being tormented. No, they let tormented be flipped when we overcome. I want hell to be afraid. Because he wants to put it on us. You know why? Because he does it. He's thinking every time you and, over, you and I overcome fear, the devil is reminded of his doom day, judgment day. Because that's where he belongs. He belongs in hell. hell. Hell was never created for you and I. Never created for you and I. God didn't think, oh my gosh, Adam and Eve, we're going to sin, so let's, let's find a place for them. That moment they sinned, even before that, God knew and he made a plan. So you and I can live in the plan. I don't want to be known to live in fear. I don't want to be known to live in lies. And I don't want to be, I don't want to live but what I said, I don't want to live partnering. I have a partnership with fear. No, I have a partnership with the greatest and the only mighty God that there is. I have a partnership with a God that nothing is impossible. I have a partner with God that there is a God of miracles. I have a partner with God that gives me peace when I don't have it. But I can say, I have a God who says when you're weak, you can say I am strong. And I'm not saying it because I'm faking it. I'm saying it because it comes from my spirit that dwells inside of me. You and I can say that. But you know what the enemy is going to tell us? Why are you saying that you're strong? You know you're not strong. Look at the weakest you are. Look at you crying. Look at you're depressed. Look at your anxiety. You know what? I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to look. I'm going to go beyond because this is here. But my God is here. So that's what we need to do. I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the eyes of Jesus. I'm going to see my God. And whatever lives here, you know, I'm not even going to see it. I'm not denying it. But hey, I'm not going to live by it. And I refuse to live by it. And it's a choice. It's a choice. Today you need to know that your God is amazing. Our God is amazing. We and I are able to overcome whatever obstacle, whatever sickness. If you need deliverance, he gives it to you. It's only one time. We can have one encounter with God. One encounter with God. If we believe so, we can have one encounter with God. And he can set us free whenever he desires to set us free. But I'm not going to box my God. I'm not going to put him in my timeline. Because I believe his word and his word is truth. And he says that he promised he's going to keep his promise. So every morning you get up and you're going to say, my God keep his promises. And we cannot base who our God is and diminish or, or, or minimize who he is just because we had a bad experience or because our parents didn't keep those promises or because so-and-so didn't keep promises and because we were betrayed. Okay, that happened, but now we're with him. And he never leaves us. Never. Even if you feel alone tonight and you think that he left you, I'm going to tell you, no, he has not left you. He's there with you. He's carrying every tear that you have shed. He's carrying them. Because every tear was a word that you thought about it that hurt you. He is keeping them. 
He loves you so much. So I'm asking you, whatever you're believing, many of you are believing for miracles because only God can intervene. And I'm going to tell you that he says, I'm going to keep my promises. I give it to you. Believe me. Believe me because and be reminded that I am bigger than the obstacle that you're facing because I already made a way for you outcome. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.